starting to work on the slap bed for the ambulance. And I've done a complete mock-up in SketchUp. Um, so I just printed out the first step I need to do right here, which is to basically make a rectangle. That'll make the box that's currently in there completely flat. And also this part will also be hinged so you can lift the whole bed up and access the storage underneath. So today we're gonna be starting on that. So this is where the slap bed is going to sit on this existing bench here. We took all the cushions off that were on there. Seat belts were mounted to this board right here. Uh, took those out as well. And so this is going to be the basis of the slap bed basically. So this is all the wood that we need to do the slap bed. We've got a mix of one by threes. We've got two by twos as well as one by fours for the slats and then two by fours for the legs. Pretty simple stuff right here. I think it was just under a hundred bucks at Lowe's to uh, get all the wood necessary for this. Even though I built this in SketchUp, always double check your measurements. I will start by building the base that will hinge up, highlighted right here in pink. I started by cutting the two by two that will run along the front of the base. Next, I measured and cut the 1x3 that will make up the rest of the base frame. Hey, if you like this content and would like to see more van conversion builds like this, make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell notification. Now let's finish building this. This is supposed to fit just like so, and this is supposed to fit like so. I then glued and screwed these pieces together to create the flat surface I needed. This is not necessary for every application as long as you have an even surface. Of course I use countersunk holes here. As you'll see throughout the build, this makes for a very clean aesthetic and so nothing gets caught or ripped on screw heads or splinters. I that's a life hack. I would say it's a life hack. I'm, I'm, it's well used within the trade, but... It's a life hack. Now, when building this base frame, you can screw in from the outside, but I prefer the cleaner look and strength of a pocket hole. The Craig Jig did not have the proper angle, so I had to make my own. So this is the bottom frame of the slap bed. So the reason I have built this up um, is because I have this heavy board right here that is for mounting the seat belts and so that has to stay there and so it just creates an uneven surface. So I built it up to create a flat surface for me to start mounting the slats on. What this also will do is there are going to be three hinges back here and that will allow us to open this up and access the storage underneath here. I am insetting the hinges into the base frame to allow the bed to sit flat and have all the lines be flush. I am using a Dremel for this, but please use a router if you have one. Next, I moved on to the face of the frame that will pull out. I cut and mounted the 2x4 legs to a 2x2 runner. For a 75 inch long bed, I am using 3 legs with 2 4 inch lag bolts countersunk into each leg. That is beautiful. These lag bolts are what hold houses together, so I think it'll hold the bed together all right. Next, we cut all the slats. They are all of the exact same measurement, which makes it very easy. We used a total of 21 slats to make this sturdy and easy to use bed. We laid out all the slats on the base so we can mark for drilling countersunk holes right. in each. Uh, 
Whoa! Move it up. Okay, I'm sorry, that was too satisfying. Yes, Whitney, chalk lines are an amazing thing and very helpful for making something that will never be seen so beautiful, as you will see later in this video. Make sure you have all of the boards in an orientation that looks good. Look for grain patterns, color, and knots that could get in the way of screws. I'm drilling two staggered countersunk holes in each board. This pattern will reduce the chance of the board splitting, and it looks pretty cool. Alright, so this part right here is going to be the face of the slats that will slide out. So that will just be set like that, and what I've done here on this back part that's going to lift up is I have beveled in an eighth inch sheet channel here to put this metal which you will see exactly why later. But right now we've got our slats all cut and sanded. After laying out the slats, I started by setting the middle slat and the two boards on either side of it. This will be the first of three guide slides, so make sure this one is perfectly square because you'll work out to the edges from here. I used a feeler gauge to make sure every slat was perfectly spaced, but anything can be used as a gauge as long as it holds its size. I spaced the guide slats 1.5 millimeters apart and the rest of the slats at three millimeters. I found the spacing to be the perfect blend of low friction, glide smooth, and feel solid while sitting and laying on it. Before you get too far, test the slats to make sure everything is square and will glide smooth without a snag. You know what's really satisfying? Is these are like in line. And that is why you use chalk lines and equal measurements, my OCD friends. I told you it's worth it. So this piece of flat stock is going to be our stopper as well as it will tie all of these slats together. So what I'm going to do right now is I already pre-marked where I need to drill holes on this piece of metal here. I went with a piece of flat stock because it was thin enough where I could push the slats in further and thus be able to bring them out further as well um, when it extends into bed mode. I had to make countersunk holes in the middle so the screw heads would not catch when pushing the bed in. I used three different bits for this. A small one for a pilot hole right through the metal, a slightly larger one to go halfway through the metal, and a third larger one but only going about a quarter of the way into the metal. This creates a flush and secure fitment. Who knows where the footage went of installing the metal piece and marrying the two sections back together, but the metal is screwed to the underside of the slats that slide out, which acts as both a stopper and a guide to keep all the slats straight and make it easy to pull in and out. Alright, and now we have the finished product of our slat bed. Now this slat bed hinges up and we have access to all of the storage underneath here. Then it just hinges right back down, sits into place. We did leave this inch gap right in the back here to make sure that we could hinge up and not hit the wall. I am going to add handles to the part that slides out um, to, just to make it easier pulling it out and pushing it back in. So I'll pull this out just like that. And then that is full bed mode. It is the perfect 75 inches long and 38 inches wide. So we're going to get a twin XL mattress for this, cut it and be able to have a back for when it's in couch mode. And then it will fold all flat into a 
full Twin XL. And so before I put this all the way in, I want to mention that it is important to have at least a lock mechanism on here so this doesn't open while driving or do what I did and have friction do the work. So it is effortless to push the slat bed most of the way in, but then the last inch has some additional friction where it will not allow the slats to slide out while you're driving. So just an extra little push and then you're in and that's not coming out while you're driving. That's why it is going to be important to have handles on here to make it easier to pull the slat bed out when you're ready to. watching the video today I hope you found it helpful and if you didn't leave a comment and a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit that bell notification to be notified every time I post if you have any questions leave a comment and I'll respond quickly